you can see me. Me? Just say open my camera. Hello, everyone. Hello, Do you hear me? Do you hear me? And welcome. Welcome, welcome to all of you today. We are so excited to be here today. Um, Do you thank hear you. me? Karen. Karen is going to be our technical director today. So thank you, Karen, for what you're doing right now and making us all visible. And we have Mad with us with our global chair. And we have Alex. Welcome, Alex. We can see you and we can hear you. So go ahead, Mad. Thank you, Virginia, and thank you all for being here. This is Global Networking and one more of our events, sustainability, entrepreneurship, gender equality, domestic violence, literature, and we continue and continue. And now, women in business. And I say welcome to all. And when I say all, I really mean it, because it's not just about women. This is our, it's just also about men, women and men. This is true, it's an organization for women, and this is even for women, by women. But also, we need that complicity. Also, we need to have men on board. So you are with us, and we invite you to send your feedback, to send your comments, and be part of that. To think about developing goals, have a very special chapter that is gender equality. So we are moving beyond because we are moving globally. And global goals demand a new approach. And on that approach, we need to make everyone on board. And on that, what having women in business? Is that an issue for you or not? Do, do we have barriers? Is the business sector that prevents women to enter, that is not showing percentage that attractive measures for women? that is adapted to their capacity to balance family and business, and only men can do it? Is that a, a problem with quota? We don't have enough number of, of women. All of that question, we are going to go through it today in this event. But let's go with some data, some numbers to help us to see what is happening right now with women in business in the world. Only 5% of the companies have serious women. Why? First question. In the top 35 CEOs in the world, only three are women. Why? They are not trained enough. They are not educated enough. What's going on? It's a matter of development. The more economical development a country is, the more equality they show. Is that correct? They go with numbers. Africa. Africa has a very high percent of women in senior management. In fact, 38%, not as Asian. And paradoxically, you will see India. India is in the third position of the lower countries with global representation. Europe, one out of three women are managers. And here in Spain, we are proud to say, and let me please be happy to, to say that, that we are over 34%. But it's just a good start, nothing more than that. We need to go a long way to walk a long road. But what happened with Spain that is different from other countries? Why? It's a matter of political will, it's a matter of legislation, it's a matter of individual options of women who say, no, this is not my place. We are going to explore that, and for that, we have bring many global chairs from G100, all ladies league, and we are going to do exactly what are the framework of sustainable development goals. We are going to go through three panels with building, trying to build resilience by empowerment through entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, we can see that is a key aspect to move forward. Why? And I, let, me, let me say it as a symbol the way I see global networking. That is, that we all of us are little Legos, colorful, different shapes, but we go all together, we are a big giant. Global goals, global crisis demand global responses, and for that, we need to join action. And discussions, even like that, 
that was the way, and that is our solution. So please, join me, my co-moderator, are also colorful and coming from different parts of the world. You have already heard Virginia Rivera, that is national chair from Puerto Rico and CEO of Solarpreneurs, very connected with one of our panels, entrepreneurship. She built empowerment. She helped to build resilience on women. So we are very proud that she is here with us. And she's also a professional of communication. Also, Karen Brujez and Alex Okoroki, they are. So I don't know what I'm going to do next with all that experts on, on, on communication. I think I will just took this opportunity to say this word and I will follow the event live. Virginia, please. Well, I'm so happy to be here. I'm very, very excited to be sharing this moment with you. Um, Alex will be joining us shortly. So you saw another little face here. She'll be coming back soon. But I want you to all know that we're all in our countries. And in some countries, we may have a little bit of a, a problem with our signal, but we will be right back. But one of the things that I think that I love that um, Mar just said is that now more than ever, you'll be able to see more women in corporate roles. However, we are still underrepresented, but not today. Today, we see all women. We have so many global chairs today, women from different parts of the world impacting in different ways our business sector, commerce. It's what makes the world go round. And I'm sure you've heard that women are the economic engine globally. And that is true because we are a majority, but also because we make 85% of the purchasing decisions. So when it comes to buying, to investing, we are there, but we're also there to work. But when it comes to leadership position in C-suites, we're not there. When it comes to financing, we're not there. So we have a lot of work to do and today we'll be talking about all these wonderful topics. We have incredible women, women have changed the world, women have moved the world. So I am so excited to be here today with you, Maude, and with Alex and with Karen and with all these amazing women. So thank you. It's us, we are grateful for you, not only for today, but all your work that you do daily from as national chair of Puerto Rico and a, and a a great manager on global networking and all the structure that we hold in all this league. Also, Karen Brujez, Karen Brujez from Colombia, is CEO of Purple Women, among other uh, skills and positions that she holds. She's also a national chair from, from Colombia. Karen is in charge of all this control aspect that is absolutely crazy for all of us. It would be good to the audience to remind them that everything we do is voluntary. And it's our engine to move forward. It's our passion that move us, not our sponsors. <laughs> so so thank you for, for our understanding. If there is something that is not working, and Karen, please, some words to us. Thank you so much for being here. You know how much uh, we admire you. Okay, Rea. so I'm very excited. Really, it's the uh, first time that I talk in English. So it's very important for me that it's a uh, um, broke, uh, it's a challenge for me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in a space with a wonderful and powerful woman. I'm Karen Brujes, I'm a founder and director of Mujeres Violeta and a uh, Colombia country chair to All Ladies League. Really, is um, all in my my role is facilitating the technical part of this event. Really, I think it that it's important to be inspired by women leaders and transcend boards. It's an opportunity that acknowledge the excellent leaders around the world. Thank you, Mar, for this opportunity, and thank you, Virginia. And uh, really, uh, we need to talk. In, the, in this last time with Alex, the other leader of the panel. Yes, Alex, okay, we, I think we lost her, isn't it? Because of the internet problems, isn't it? Yeah. She'll be yes. Back. yes, she will be back, yes, absolutely. 
So we, I think we, we can move forward if you if you allow me, Virginia, just just to introduce you what we are going to be with us in all the panels. It could be from WITI, Government and Chamber of Commerce and Industry from India, the School of Business of Management from Florida in US, and Global Chair from Global Networking, of course, and for Art, Media, Communication, Education, Public Relations, Engineer, Human Resources, Design and Lifestyle, Youth Empowerment, Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Youth Enterprise and Leadership, and we continue. So, you know, all that sector will be with us. So, imagine the level of discussion that we will have today. Virginia. So, I am so thrilled and I'm really excited to hear all these women will do. I think we have a video. Do we have a video um, that we're going to yes. see now, with Dr. Harbeet Aurora? Okay. So, I Hello, think we're. Dear soul sisters, congratulations to all of you for making this event happen for the All Ladies League Global Networking Chapter, for the G100 Global Networking Chapter, where all of you are coming together and translating global networking into a reality and showing everybody what this means. Truly, this is the way that we all need out of uh, the crisis that we find ourselves the feeling of being in an impasse, being stuck, being at a dead end. This is the way forward this is the way into the future this is the way out of feeling that sense of helplessness and passivity that has overtaken our lives this is the way to show our resilience by standing up for each other being there for each other being present for each other and that's exactly what you all are doing i'm so inspired and so happy to see all of you come together in co-creation in collaboration and showing everybody showing the world that what we need right now is a greater sense of connection, of oneness, of sisterhood and brotherhood. Congratulations to all. Wow, how powerful is that video? And definitely what makes us unite after what we've been through is precisely what we're doing today, is meeting up, being here, showing up and sharing <laughs> what we know and how we do it. Mari, you were gonna say something. Yes, absolutely. This is our founder, she doesn't need presentation. And, and we always love and admire what she say. She talk about sisterhood and brotherhood. You know, so this, this equality, this real equality that, that makes a world colorful and not the homogeneity of a great party, but just this, this contribution that they're feeling each other. Always thank you so much for being Aurora. I know it's, it's late for her, but we, I hope she will see the recording and we are so grateful for her, for her presence here. Virginia. Very good. So now Very the good. way this is so going to run today, and we're so excited, we have three panels. And these panels are, I would say, the pillars of our women in business. Number one is empowerment. Number two, the resilience. And number three, entrepreneurship. This is how we move forward, how our economy moves. So today we're going to have leading with us. Mar is going to be leading our first panel, and that's empowerment. And what is empowerment? It's the process of growing stronger. And I think that that is definitely the first step for any of us is to really become part of the process. Adelante Mar and this wonderful panel, the empowerment panel. Thank you. We're inviting now uh, Jasmina Asari, the Global Chair for Public Relations, is our first speaker. Jasmina, thank you so much for being here. We know that you have a very busy agenda, and even that you are here with us. We are, we are also inviting Mireo Tulekima, Karen Dewey from the Netherlands, and Ruby Ortiz from the uh, Director of the Institute of Management. They are all very welcome. We are to start with Jasmina. We are running out of time, sorry. Jasmina is a job international commercial broker company managing partner in Dubai, nominated four times record among the strongest business women in the world, and decorated by the Queen of Netherlands as me. She's also, and that is for us, is is something that we, we hold this close to our heart. She is global chair for she has on public relations. Jasmina, 
Thank you so much for being here. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for organizing this festival. You know, I feel so proud being a part of it. And I think that having this event is the first step towards empowering women. You know, we are all coming from different cultures, different backgrounds, and this is by itself first step for empowering women because we are learning from each other, we are exchanging experiences, and uh, uh, and that is the way we start by empowering women. Uh, it's a very important issue. I'll try to. Uh, read a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, my experience and uh, my beliefs. So it's not only what we read, it's also what we do uh, exactly in life. Uh, I think that empowering women uh, starts by their home. You know, we have to, to remember that uh, women are major partners in development of any economy. So we have to start by empowering them uh, domestically at their homes. Then, in uh, health, for, uh, for example, in, uh, in the culture, in social, in, in economic field as well. So, if we are talking about rural areas and if we are talking in a different uh, uh, way uh, about women in big cities, so we have two ways of empowering women. Uh, we have anyhow to reinforce their self-confidence, teach them how to make their own choice, but knowing as well, at the same time, what are their duties. So we all have duties in our homes. We have duties in our uh, uh, social life. So we have to find the correct balance. And believe me, it's not an easy task. So we always have to choose to be somewhere stronger and uh, somewhere a little bit in a weak situation. Uh, businesses, no matter how big or small they are, we have to believe in ourselves. We have to, uh, to to put effort in empowering ourselves and others. What I like to do in life is, in, is helping other ladies uh, in empowering them. Uh, rules and regulations in each country uh, should be in favor of females. I mean, uh, that's what uh, Dr. Hardin was saying always, that our first duty as uh, uh, business councils and being members in WICCI is to try to get in touch with government, with high position people, uh, to try to change anything that we can change in favor of uh, business women or women to be involved in high position as CEOs and even as uh, regular employees. I mean, this equality is very important. Uh, we should insist on educating females in rural areas in its uh, preliminary education, but they should do it. Uh, it's, uh, so they can combat poverty and unemployment. In cities, we can power females in many uh, ways. That's what I am doing personally. I'm offering a lot of training courses. I'm offering mentoring. I'm doing a lot of mentoring. Uh, I'm trying to help them in developing their skills, help them in spending by their own businesses. If they have their uh, own businesses, I help them to promote in sales, in marketing, in selling. I try to open for them uh, markets abroad. Uh, men and women should be treated equally at work and in life, and in social life, and in business life. Uh, we are facing a lot of challenges, especially we females. Uh, we are defined social expectations, we have financial troubles very often, we have limited fund, uh, uh, access to funding, uh, we have difficulties in balancing our uh, lives, responsibilities, we have the fear of failure, we have uh, sometimes difficult, we face difficulties in environmental issues, family issues, and all these things. So, uh, I'm always asked to say an advice to businesswomen at the end of any speech. I always say, try and fail, but never fail to try. So, I'm here to help anybody who is uh, uh, in need of. I have a commercial broker office in Dubai. I have a big network around the world. And really, I do adore empowering women. Hope that I delivered a quick message 
and that I was just to the point, just to be a small part of this big, important event. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear Jasmina. Uh, really appreciate your efforts to be here today. That I know that it was, it was very difficult, and we are going to release you now because I, we know that you have to leave. Thank you for that message on education, on solidarity, for, because empowering women is about solidarity as well, and all that passion. Because all all you are saying is also about passion to move forward. Thank you, Jasmina. Thank you so thank much. You so much. And thank you, thank Harbin, you. at the first place. And thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. I love you. Thank you. We too. We too. Thank you. Thank you so much. We move over now to Karen Lewis, our dear Karen. Uh, Karen, it's good here of education. We were talking about education, and now Karen Lewis, we're going to go in depth. She's global chair. She has the president of Wiki Netherlands. President of Jura India and Senior Advisor to Government, Social Organization and Companies, as well as President of the NGO Planet Hope. Karen, once again, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Karen, unmute your, your micro in case it's new. Sorry. I said yeah. uh, good evening, everyone. It's evening here in the Netherlands, uh, in Europe. Um, I love to part of this great webinar and I like to express my appreciation to Mar and her team for organizing this wonderful event because it gives us the opportunity to listen to each other, to learn and to grow. So a little bit about myself, I'm Karen and I work at the Dutch government and I run an NGO in India and I initiate, uh, initiated the company Your India Connection and reconnecting Europe and India business wise. I'm privileged to be the chairwoman of an NGO working for girls and women because it inspires me and motivates me doing my own business as well. I like to start with sharing my own experience because since 10 years, I'm the chairwoman of uh, Planet Hope Foundation and initiate and support women and girls to help them to achieve their dreams. And we give girls moral support and stimulate them to go for higher study. And I'm very inspired by Pooja, one of our talented girls from a very poor background. She finalized her hotel management diploma course and her dream was to run, to run a modern and fancy coffee shop. And with some help of senior entrepreneurs, she developed a good business plan and now runs a Tulip Cafe in Bangalore. And it was just opened in 2019 and then the pandemic came. She had to close the shop and uh, that is now more than one and a half year ago. But she was eager to, um, to continue working, to be independent and to earn a decent salary to support her family. But most of all, she wanted to develop her personal and professional skills. At the moment, she runs our vocational education center in Bangalore. She develops the curricula, organizes the teacher-teacher programs, collects women, women and inspires them to come for study and mediate them to a job. So this Pudja is only 23, 23 years old and she was born in a very poor family and is very, very talented. From young age, she learned to fight for a better life. She learned how to deal with disappointments, reflect on it and continue realizing her dream. The skills she developed as a child, as a teenager, are very useful to run her own business and become successful. You know, women entrepreneurs are dear to me. That is why I'm looking forward to this, looked forward to this webinar, to me to learn and connect with women. And I'm in a good company today with all of you. You're all women, all successful entrepreneurs, and you're all part of an international network. The network is big because of Dr. Harbin, who initiated and made it to her mission to connect women, women entrepreneurs. And you know, this initiative is still unique. Globally, there are still very few women entrepreneurs compared to male entrepreneurs. And there are even fewer women entrepreneurs who operate internationally. Women's economic empowerment is one of the world's most promising areas of investment, biggest emerging markets and talent pools. And of course, I have met women who are 
uh, self-employed or who are business leaders in low and middle income countries, many women have their own businesses. But most of these are small companies serving the local market and certainly not operating internationally, despite their potential. Unfortunately, this is still the situation today. Even after years and years, women funds and initiatives, women have still not succeeded to expand their small businesses. There is a need for more serious support to allow women to scale up. It's time for the next phase, a phase in which women not only support start up a business, but are also able to scale up their business. Let's work together to support women entrepreneurs worldwide. So women, let's empower and support each other. I, le I learned a few lessons last year and I learned a lot from Pooja. And I like to share these quickly with you and I hope it will inspire you. First of all, know where to focus energy and time, because most women entrepreneurs have also to take care of their family, of their parents. So focusing is very important. Um, learn how to hold yourself accountable, set goals, track and monitor them and manage your expectation. Know when you need to reevaluate every aspect of personal accountability and being honest with ourselves will empower any entrepreneur to be more successful. It's important that women believe in themselves for themselves. And never, never, the previous speaker also said, fear asking for help. Better face with tasks that we don't know how to do. There are not enough hours in the day to do, or merely we just can't do it. By learning to ask for help, women entrepreneurs can reveal their strength, not their weakness. Don't be afraid to fail, because by fearing failure, women often don't leap into entrepreneurship. Fear is natural, but overcoming fear is powerful. You have to believe in yourself before anyone else will. Never stop learning. That's also a very important lesson. Learning is a task that no female entrepreneur should ever choose to do. A great way to learn from others is to surround yourself with those who excel at something you don't. And with the most important lesson, I like to conclude my speech empower those around you by not always needing credit by providing an opportunity for others by empowering others female entrepreneurs can attract the best of the best the best employees the best mentors the best clients listen be empathic be encouraging be empowering in your entrepreneur endeavors thank you very much it is us. We are grateful with you, Karen. I knew that you would be fantastic, and especially because you will you bring something so creative. Because it's not that you go through what means education. You go more than that, and you make the connection. What means international networks as as a big one to connect entrepreneurship. That that they are even realize the resilience. You know, we are going to find resilience by connecting to to each other. Thank you. For bring from bring that up for all the elements and the case study you bring. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. We now go to Miriel Tulekiva. It's now is another global chair of G Hendrix on Engineer. Thank you for being here, Miriel. Thank you. It's so your microphone is okay. Everything is okay. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Can you Hello. Hear yes, yes, yes. We listen very, very slowly, but slow, but, but we listen. We, we, very low, but we listen to you. Miriel is an award-winning entrepreneur, a senior petroleum engineer, a steel global consultant, and women empowerment advocate and champion. We have no doubt about this, that you are a champion of other women. Please, Miriel, go ahead. How we could empower women. Good, good evening, good morning, wherever you are watching from. For me, it's early morning on Tuesday, but I'm so excited to be here. And thank you again to the team to organize all of this. And uh, thank you to Dr. Arbin to put together all those, you know, eminent women and uh, give us the opportunity to share our 
uh, experience and knowledge on you know empowerment today and you know as as you said i mean i've been i've been uh, an empowerment advocate for years now i've mostly worked with men so i am an engineer by background and i've uh, evolved uh, my in my career uh, alongside men so i had to take the lead on uh, on being a role model for women and uh, and really empowering the other women and bring them with me because that's what it's all about it's not just about me uh, navigating the you know the 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 process it's about you know me making it but also bringing other women uh, with me and through my my journey as uh, you know as a woman a minority as a woman in in the um, energy sector because that's where my skill is I realized that there are several steps that we need you know uh, as women we need to go through to empower ourselves uh, and and make you know make ourselves visible and have a voice in uh, in this very male dominated environment and one thing that you know strangely enough the first thing that starts you know that i realize is that you know it starts with me it starts with me it starts with me understanding that you know i'm i have a worth i'm self-worth and acknowledge that I have power because I think when I enter this industry, I I enter it as a, as a victim already, saying because I am a woman, I already have all those excuses. But after a while, I realized that you know it's not about looking outside; it's about looking inside myself and start with my self worth and acknowledging that I have power, and then you know take the step to step into this power and decide that, you know, I'm going to use this power to make a trail for other women. So that was the first step that, you know, I went through as a, as a woman, as a woman in energy and back then being the only woman uh, and the only woman of color in this environment. So, I, and the second step was also for me, again, it was depending on me, is uh, find a choice, make a choice. So I had to make a choice of letting things happen to me and accepting what people were thinking about me and especially men or take on, you know, uh, take on the, my power and make things happen. I decided to make things happen. It, it's like, okay, whatever people think, that's not a problem. I'm going to focus on myself, which meant I had to uh, get you know the mentor the sponsors that I needed uh, you know there were not a lot of women so I used the you know I go I went to the men and uh, and asked them to sponsor and 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 uh, coach me so that's that was the first step so not just wait it was about you know going and asking and make this choice of keep pushing, even if you know some of the men were not really ready to coach or mentor me. I kept pushing and uh, and asked for this help so that I could learn, you know, and could navigate through this process, uh, through this uh, industry that was really male dominated. So I took the choice to do that. The second thing is that you know when you get this choice. And, uh, and you create this environment where you keep learning, where you have people that can accompany you through the process, is to uh, reflect on yourself and look at, you know, what are the key things that I can bring? What are my strong, you know, strong, the strong aspect in my personality, in, in my knowledge that I can use and, and define my own purpose and my own vision and plan for it? Because I couldn't, I couldn't actually wait. Because as a woman, sometimes in those male-dominated environments, you you are invisible. So you really have to focus on what do I want to, where do I want to be, what do I want to bring, and how do I want to navigate, and put a plan in place and follow it. Because otherwise, you know, your, you lose your power if you wait. Nobody is, you know, you you might actually wait forever. So. Take, you know, take your responsibility, take your power, empower yourself, and go for it. And then the, the, the fourth thing was to obviously get access to opportunity and resources to be able to, to, um, to, to show your power, to be able to progress in the industry. And that's where, you know, 
uh, getting, finding the woman, the role models, if they exist anywhere in the industry, not just you know, locally, but globally, finding those women, getting into those, um, those association, getting into those network group to get yourself you know, uh, the opportunity to have a network that can you know, build you up, but also f go for those opportunity if you don't wait for people to bring the opportunity if you can't, for example, at some point, I didn't, I was stuck, you know, uh, I couldn't go higher than in the corporate world. I decided to create my own table and that's how I, I started, you know, my business in the industry as an entrepreneur, uh, empty energy resources. So I just realized that, you know, I had the power to do that. So I, I find an alternative, you know, an alternative way to be able to continue to rise in the in, in in the industry so really get access make sure you get access to those opportunities then they're not you know always easy to get but don't give up get access to it find the woman that are you know that can partner with you find the the men that can help you and really go for it and then the 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 fifth thing that you know sometimes women f forget to do is to to become influenced and be visible. Sometimes we shy away from the spot, from the spotlight, and uh, it's important that we go out, especially for us, you know, in this industry. And I always tell people, you know what, I will always go out because there's not a lot of role models in, in, in those male-dominated environments, so I have to go, that's my duty to go out, to become a role model for another woman so that they understand that, you know, if I can do it, they can do it. So that's how the empowerment actually starts, and that's how we, we perpetuate this empowerment. So in, in a way, you know, for me, it's all about, it starts with us, and then there's a lot of action to be done. We can't do it alone. We need other women or we need a network to be able to go through and, and, and make this empowerment happen. But uh, if there's something that I can tell people, never, you know, women, never give up. Find a way, find another woman, find an, another alternative if where you are you can't actually step into your power. Find another alternative, find another route to be able to, to excel and to be able to, to show you know, how powerful you are and create you know, a positive impact in your environment. And, and I think that's, that's the really most important thing. And one thing that I've always lived live with is you know, my motto is always don't leave anything on the table. Keep going, you are unlimited and no, nothing can stop you. Everything is there and make sure, you know, when you are there, when you manage to go through, bring other sisters with you. That's how empowerment works. Thank you so much, Muriel. You, you always go beyond expectation. I knew that, but you, you reassured that idea today. As I love what you always say, but especially when you when you send a message of digging into ourselves to get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. power. It's something that, that most of the women try to to someone else externally first inside you, and then you connect with a with a network. Muriel, mm -hmm. fantastic! I hope this is just the beginning of of another event when you can go more in depth with that wonderful thought. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, it's a pleasure to just be part of such an event. The opportunity was for us. Thank you. And the same about And Thank then you. our our next speaker is Ruby Ortiz. You know, we have been from different parts of the world. I haven't seen Virginia. This, this, we are still moving from, from, from one place to another, from Dubai to Nigeria to the Netherlands, and now to Florida. We are, we are, we are flying all over the world. Hello, everyone. For me, it's really an honor to be part of this panel. I, I'm just amazed to hear everything that everyone has said. So thank you, Mar. I really appreciate the opportunity you gave me inviting me to this panel. And thank you for everyone being here. And I want to thank Dr. Harbin, too, for the idea of creating this wonderful group. 
And I, I can relate to everything that everyone has said, you know, I, I can relate. For example, my first career was a mathematician and I can relate. I was the only woman, a lot of men, and, and I had to empower myself and I had to ask for help, just as the last speaker said. And I think that the power skills that we must have for the 21st century, we have to think that we can empower ourselves, that we can do it. We cannot wait for someone else. Like other ladies said, you can wait forever if you're waiting for someone else to empower you. So now that we're mentors, I think that what we have to teach is that we can empower ourselves. And when we feel empowered, immediately start empowering other sisters and other brothers too, you know, because it's not only for women, it's, it's for humankind, for men, for women that we can do it. And these power skills that we must have for the 21st century, leadership is one of them. Automotivation, have this fire inside you that you feed every day, don't let it die. Teamwork, we cannot work alone. We have to find people that are better than us. And you have all said all these things that I'm saying, you said it in one way or another. Maybe I'm just making an overview of every everything that all of you said. Time management, you know, sometimes we say, I don't have time. We have all the time in the world but we have to manage our time. Like uh, somebody else said, you know, focus. We, we have to know where we have to put our time because we have families, we have parents, we have children, we have our business, we have our work. So time management is something very, very important to empower ourselves. Innovation. We have to be thinking, how can we do this in a new way, in a better way, in a cheaper way? in an easier way, in, in a way that we enjoy, that we have fun doing whatever we do. It doesn't have to be work, you know, something like a punishment. No, we have to enjoy what we do. And when we do that, I think we are very, very productive. When we're productive, we are happy. And that empowers us. And change, you know, we have to learn change management. And 2020 taught us, you know, change. Everything changed from one day to the other. And so if we have all these power skills. Before they were called soft skills, not anymore. We changed the name. They are power skills. Because if you're a leader, if you have automotivation, if you can manage your time, if you have teamwork, you're powerful. So they are not soft skills, they are power skills. And how can you empower yourself? Well, the first thing is that you have to be a leader. And it's very easy. You know, leadership is not a blessing that you have from heaven and that if you don't have it, you cannot be a leader. Leadership is a decision. If you decide you want to be a leader, you can be a leader. How? You know, that's the question. How can I be a leader? I don't know how. Okay, it's very easy. First, be an example. Whatever you want in the world to happen, you do it and be the example. And I remember Gandhi said that, be an example. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the role model. <coughs> I get too excited when I'm talking about this. Then have a vision, have a vision from here to here. We want to go, we want to grow from here to here. How can we get there? That's your vision and share your vision. Because if you are the only one with the vision, it will never happen. You have to share your vision with everyone, with all your circle. And that is the way that you can really achieve it. And then challenge, challenge the status quo, challenge yourself. Challenge things that are happening. Don't just be, say, oh, this is the way it is. I cannot do anything. You, have, you can challenge things. <coughs> Enable others. 
I think it's it's very important that whatever we know, we enable others to act. And when we do that, <coughs> we're growing this circle with us and encourage the heart. Tell everyone how good they are doing when they are doing it. It's very easy. So today, encourage someone. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs> Okay, here we are. Can you hear me now? Thank you, Dr. Ruby Ortiz. I know I also get very excited. That's why I always have my water right here also. But you know, I loved every moment of all of you speaking. I have to go back and say, for example, just Mina, which is no longer here, but I loved her enthusiasm about mentoring other women. And then we go into Karen and we hear this wonderful story of this 23 year old who was empowered and how she's a leader for others to see because we are so underrepresented. When somebody says yes and empowers another young woman to go ahead, I think that is absolutely beautiful. Morel, oh my God, you know, from your message, so much, but I love when you said, I made my own table. Sometimes we can't wait for people to give us an opportunity. Sometimes we have to take it, be empowered and be there and do it. And most importantly, I loved share your vision. Like Dr. Ruby Ortiz said, you know, if you keep it to yourself, nobody's going to know what you want to accomplish. If you say it, other people will join in and they'll say, you know what? I wanted to do that. There's power in numbers but it takes one person to make that difference. So, you know, I think that we started wonderfully, Mod. I love this empowerment panel. It was beautiful. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Virginia. Yes, it was really empowering, isn't it, Virginia? We, 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 we have a, this, this power that brings diversity because there were diverse opinions, you know, but we see how can joint action is possible from diversity, different word. Okay, so we missed out, we lost, okay, there we are, okay. Now, go ahead, uh, Mar. It's about the global goals, and I think that we, 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 we achieved the goal of empowerment that this was panel. I hope all will be empowered, but all this wonderful thought and wonderful women that have been participating. Thank you for all the speakers, each of you. And now we go to the to the next panel with our lovely Alex. Alex, it's okay your 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 micro now. Yes, you could hear us. Okay. <laughs> Do you hear me now? Alex, are you happy to be here? Are you happy to be here with us? Oh, I'm very happy to be here. And I was sitting backstage listening to all the amazing speakers, you know, from the empowerment panel. Uh, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Mirelle. Thank you. Uh, um, oh, my goodness. Ruby. Jasmina. Everyone was amazing. Jasmina. Jasmina, exactly. Jasmina. And just the, you know, the message you shared about empowerment and how it's important for us to carry ourselves along. Um, I think that's very, very important. I'm so sorry. I don't know if you hear me. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I could have missed this for anything in the world. So welcome to Women in Business. Thank you, Ma, for inviting me and allowing me to share in this space with everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Okoroji. I am um, an actress, media personality, and uh, I'm coming all the way from Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. So just in case you see anything happen, know that technology, I'm praying to the gods of technology that we can, you know, just handle this. But I'm so happy to be moderating this panel for resilience. And um, we have some pretty amazing women who are going to be joining us on this panel. Um, I'm sure they are somewhere backstage. Um, and I know that we're wondering why resilience. I know they say that resilience is having the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties, from obstacles, from toughness, you know, having the ability to snap back into purpose. So we have a couple of questions. We're thinking a couple of things, and I know that our speakers here will share with us what their thoughts about resilience is 
especially in business as women in business, but just generally in life, because as women, having resilience is something that we definitely need. So we need to think about, you know, how do we define resilience? What, what defines a resilient person? What are the skills that we need to have and all of that. So just before we, um, I would like to introduce some of our speakers. I'm wondering if they're going to be joining us soon. What do you think, Ma? Yes, please. Yes, please join us. Got it? Do, do you hear me? We do. We do. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now we are going to be D and I. We are going to be Betty. And and the floor is all yours, Alex. And Alex, sorry, <laughs> sorry to, to to contradict you, but I you I have not given your opportunity you give me the opportunity to, to, to organize along with virginia and karen this wonderful uh, even thanks to people like you so my i am absolutely grateful for for you for your attitude and your generosity for being here today alex thank you it's a pleasure thank it's a pleasure. you thank, thank you. you thank you Somebody is talking. Um, you know uh, what? Oh, do you hear me? Uh, do you hear Go me ahead. now? Yes. Do you hear me now? Yes. Oh, since I called, since I called. Okay, great. Okay, great. I'm, I'm, so there's sorry. feedback. There's feedback. Is that, is that yes. just, somebody might need to somebody wear, might their, need headphones. To wear their headphones? Just in case. Just in case. Um. um okay. Okay. So I was. So I was saying that. I was saying that. Oh, there's a really. Oh, there's big a loud really big loud Um. Okay. Great. Oh. Great. Awesome. Okay, great. So I was saying welcome to the Resilience Panel, and I'm very excited that we have the amazing Michelle Ferrari joining us. Um, uh, we've got Annabella Nassetti and Shriya Shetty, who's also joining us from India. I know it's pretty late in India right now, but thank you so much for joining us at the Women in Business, and I'm excited to be your moderator for this panel. Um, and just as we kick off, I will start with our first speaker for the day, uh, Michelle Ferrari. Now, Michelle is President, Women Economic Forum, Ibero America, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. She is a businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur. She's a culture and transformation uh, consultant and expert. Now she's married and she's a mother of three and she's very, very, very passionate about life. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us. Thank How you. How are you happy today? I'm very well, happy to be here. How is everybody? We're doing great and we're happy that you're you were able to join us so uh we're just gonna let you take the floor and you know share with us uh what you'd like to share about resilience and um you know just a topic for this for today thank you alex very much so yes actually i think it's a a very great um subject to talk about resilience in many ways i would say and since we're here um, connected through the Old Ladies League, I would also, um, I also think of resilience as part of a big part of the equation for the entrepreneurial women um, advances, I would suppose. I think that it has to do a lot with the way success is um, also a part of how resilient you are. So I remember as a very young age, um, probably one of the most um, important decisions I've made in my life is being independent and having my own decisions to, that I could make towards the dreams I wanted to pursue. That dreams obviously change, you know, while you, you grow, but you never know really when you think of embarking in this entrepreneurial life, how much resilience really matters um, and how you perceive failure. I, I, I think that failure is also a huge piece of the way we learn. So the way that we can um, take into account this, this failure and look at it more into the, the sides of the growth of how you grow while you, you fail on some things or how things 
get on the way because obviously life is on the way, business is on the way, the way we might think things might happen and they don't happen in that direction. And, you know, everything that you need to manage in terms of bringing in your dreams, um, which dreams can be in your your entrepreneurial life or they can be, you know, being a working mom. I don't, I don't know. Everybody might have their different ways of dreams they want to pursue. But what I'm saying is that there's things that are always going to be coming in the way of life and th those dreams. So I think resilience is like a huge piece of not to um, allow these, these certain things that come in the way to interfere the objective of our growth towards the dreams that we want to meet, right? So for me, resilience has been um, something that I've had to certainly develop on the way. I think it's something that you learn how to do and how to deal with and how important it is for this success that you want to achieve. So I definitely think that having it in a conscious way and working through it in, you know, many times with coaching or even just realizing um, in, a, in a continuous way how you could be more resilient and how that resilience will take you further every time, right? Especially now with all this that we've been seeing with the COVID um, situation, especially on women, at least on this side of the world. I'm sitting here... In, in Mexico City right now. And as you know, I, I'm, I'm very big on human resource and how the human resource or the capital of human, you know, is so important to make things happen in companies. And also companies have had to un have unravel how people deal with everything that's going on and how they can become more resilient to lower stress levels and to really manage the realities of things that come in front, right? So I would say in conclusion to this, um, definitely resilience is something we need to learn, something we need to develop by ourselves for our own benefits. It doesn't matter, as I said, if it's, if it's for entrepreneurial reasons or if you're working in a company or if you're a working mother or if you're not a working mother, it, it's just a huge piece for me to live a better life managing resilience as a big ingredient of the recipe for life. So that's my view on, on the, the things that resilience have meant to me or I've seen or been in touch with. Thank you so much. Okay. I just unmuted myself. Sorry. Thank you so much, Michelle, for, you know, just sharing that beautiful, uh, just, you know, sharing beautiful lessons. And you, there's, there's a lot to pack in there. I know you talked about not, you know, just how important is how we manage success, how we manage failure and how we interpret that and why resilience is very important for us as women, whether we're in business, whether we work for a company, whether, you know, just even just every day leave it because, way with resilience we're able to manage our stress levels and there's something that you said that i picked out is you said something about not allowing the obstacles that we sort of confront every day to interfere in our vision and our dream and that is so important because many times there are people who've turned around who've given up on their dreams who've given up on the things that they wanted because they they were not able to master resilience so I think that it's important that you share this because as women every day, we get to experience a lot of things that sort of throw us off our journey. They throw us off our, you know, our vision and our goals. And um, just everything you said is so, 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 so necessary. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, uh, Annabella is here and I know that uh, we don't have so much time, so I'm just trying to manage the time. Now, Annabella Nassetti, she was born in Milan and has been living in London for 23 years. Now, she is an interior architect and a product designer. She's been running a very successful interior design, project management, and construction business in London for two decades. Now, her design company is the only one in the UK that has an in-house construction team, which is run by women only. Now, let's make welcome for Annabella. Annabella, thank you so much for joining us. No, How I'm, are you today? I'm good. You Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good. Well, thank you very much for uh, for being here, for inviting me. And uh, Mara, thank you very much too for inviting me also. 
foremost, I want to ask, uh, I want to say thank you to Dr. Habin for being such an inspiration and for creating this incredible movement. I think uh, it's important to raise these important issues uh, for women to believe in themselves and become who they probably never thought they could, the person they would want to become. Um, I chose to speak about resilience because I feel I have a personal experience to share that I will that will show how my resilience dealt with multiple emotional, psychological, and physical traumas. This is very different from what the other ladies spoke about, but I, I feel that I have to uh, speak uh, about this in, in a personal matter uh, because it's quite important and it will describe how far resilience can take us. Um, for me, resilience is a form of survival instinct. Survival instinct is what keeps survivors afloat. I will have to explain why I'm making such a statement for it to be credible. I am a survivor of a car crash when I was 19. I was driving when I crashed, killing to my two, my two best friends. I woke up one week later in a hospital uh, following one week in coma with multiple fractures in intensive care. I broke both my femurs, my arms, my right eye, had trauma and lost 90% of sight from my right eye. I had approximately 100 screws and one and a half meters of steel plates in my body following approximately 20 hours of surgery. When I woke up, I couldn't recognize anyone, including my family. From my point of light, I came back to join life and the feeling was of deep sadness. Only one month after the accident, I was told that both my friends had died and this obstacle was insurmountable. I felt like the world was taken from under my feet. I was falling like in those dreams where you keep on falling in an empty space. And even after waking up, I would still be falling. It was real. This is a moment where trauma turns into salvation mode by limiting the feeling of sensations that are harmful to us. I had to deal with the re rehabilitation, the loss, the pressure from relatives, friends, and the feeling of guilt. In my personal experience, I ran away from situations that would remind me of my past and I embarked into a new life. Changes such as changing the city where I was living and my college degree from business to product design. I was living in a parallel life, so close to reality that I was trying to keep the accident at bay, but was too important to ignore and not to pay respect to. The abuse of alcohol and lack of sleep brought me to severe feelings of insecurity, confusion, and panic about life. A close friend from Thailand brought me to discover meditation, and that is what I have been doing ever since. Meditation brings us to a pure state and it gives us clarity on how to best rebuild ourselves, caring for the essentials in life, the letting go of redundant matters. The combination of physical exercise and meditation gives us the strength and the vision to face anything in life with integrity and determination. Very soon I found myself running a design and project management business in London. This business was for the first five years using external building contractors who 90% of the times would leave me in trouble by mismanaging uh, projects. And this caused a lot of damage to my professional reputation. Another type of business salvation mode kicked in here where within one week, I set up my own in-house construction company where all laborers and specialists were employed directly by me. The business is run by women only. And in a male dominated industry, this was a very risky decision to make. But my integrity and hardworking mind made it great success by delivering multi-million pound projects on budget, on time, and of the quality expected by the clients. The right decision was made, and I'm now promoting this in my G100 Design and Lifestyle Wing project by creating ideas and projects for, for women who have dreams in my field. Women's resilience in life and business gives us another ingredient, ingredient in a very competitive world. Resilience in architecture is that can be related to building materials. In, this is a very different, sorry, different uh, field, but it's important for for construction. Uh, there's, um, for example, materials like uh, bamboo, which is a, a new way of of, uh, of creating scaffolding. You know, this is different technologies that we can be looking at to create resilience in other, in other fields. So in this five minutes speech, I spoke about private life 
uh, business life and the architectural life. Um, resilience is what brings us forward. And uh, I, women have an extra ingredient, as I said before, that we can uh, uh, put to, to work with our determination. And, uh, and this is what I, what I hope uh, many ladies will, will understand and follow by listening to my conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Annabella. Let me just say something, Annabella. Do you hear me? Yes. I want to say that you are an example of what resilience is. You are the face of resilience. And thank you so much for sharing such a personal story with us. One of the reasons why we're doing this is not just so that we can just give you know, strategy and insights and advice, but so that we can also share our life a life story and our journey with other women. I think that there are women who are going to listen to you and go, oh my goodness, if Annabella can 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 really get through this, I can get through this too. And um, I think it's a beautiful testimony. And something you said about resilience that stood, stood you know, stuck out for me is you saying that it is a survival instinct, right? Yes. Yes, resilience absolutely. is survival instinct. There's absolutely no way that we can survive as human beings without resilience. And just to share what it was like to go through that journey of going through that accident. Something you said, I, I started thinking about survival guilt, like, right? How come I'm the only one who survived? My friends died. I should have gone with them. I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can think of just some of the things that you experienced. And I am so grateful that you shared that story with us, shared how you also extended the resilience into your business you know, having to go through challenging times and your reputation in business being under um, attack because of just hiring the wrong people and you deciding mm -hmm. that, you know what, I'm going to hire more women in my business and I can control <coughs> this. And I, you know, that is such a beautiful story. So thank you so much, Annabella, for sharing that with us. I know thank that you. lots of women are impacted by your personal story. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to head on to our next speaker, Shriya Shetty. Hey, beautiful Shriya. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Hi, Alex. It's so good to be here, <laughs> joining with all the bunch of empowered, resilient women out here. I know. I know it's late there in India. Thank you so much for just being able to join us. Um, I know it can be late. Um, I've done late nights like this too. So thank you so much. Um, now, just if you're joining us, please know that Shriya Shetty, she is the founder of Elite India Consulting. She's president at Wiki National Council president for corporate communication and advocacy. She is a leading name in the consulting world, working closely with schools, institutes, uh, organizations, NGOs, CSR, corporate retail and hiring, skilling, reskilling, upskilling, training, and developing the human capital assets with focus on the youths and women in the country. Now she's empowering the youth and women in the country through her skilling trainings and leadership programs so that they can shape up financially and become emotional, uh, emotionally resilient um, building resilient minds and challenging all the odds. Now, thank you so much. I know that we all have very incredibly long bios, but I just wanted to rush this through time. So can't wait for you to share with us, you know, just your thoughts on resilience. Thank you so much, uh, Alex, for the wonderful elaborate intro. So without uh, further ado, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Mar and the team, of course, for putting up uh, all the great women, empowered women out here who are sharing this you know, grit and determination stories out here. So on that note, uh, definitely, uh, you know, coming from the land of India and, uh, you know, having raised in a family where, uh, you know, women are taught to have opinions, but at the same time, you know, they are also asked to fix their weaknesses, which I, you know, right from childhood, I thought it was a wrong approach. For me, uh, resilience uh, means more about amplifying your imperfections or the flaws that you have within you and see to it that how magnificently those can be accepted especially by the women because when it comes to the women workforce whether uh, be it at workplace or home I think we can do wonders and miracles once the self-acceptance and self-worth is there so for me resilience uh, I have always drawn parallel within my life experiences and that's where I think uh, it is all about risking imperfections. And when I say that it is about risking imperfections, it means to the, you know, to the core sense of, you know, you're being yourself or just being you without pretending or without comparing yourself with anybody else. And so to say, 
mental resilience i believe especially for women in business or even for the uh, you know the moms uh, or the single women it has always been about a very important crucial trait for any woman to have whether it is financial resilience whether it is mental resilience because we all know that you know the most of the world class performers like we just heard annabella and michelle sharing their stories am i heard sorry uh, i think my camera just went off go ahead we can hear you go ahead we can hear you i'm so sorry for the technical glitch so i i have always believed that left to my own devices i would always be looking out for situations to challenge to risk my imperfections or to choosing to transform so right from my journey into childhood into teenage i think i was always taught to be uh, you know like a girl you should always be behaving uh, absolutely uh, you know that ideal uh, woman or somebody who has been taught to be brave but behind the doors you shouldn't be having an opinion when you are talking to uh, men so i think that always inspired me and encouraged me to be myself so for me resilience has always been about being me myself without even having to pretend so i have always believed in pushing uh, you know my limits my horizons to explore new possibilities be it in my business or the personal professional life and that is where i think the understanding of the human behavior or you know coming from the human resource background when i used to interact with the young men and women it came across that you know in a nation full of talent it was very important for all of us to embrace our own imperfections you know the society has put us into lot of uh, categorization which which really young men and women should be coming out you know uh, putting across their choices and believing and standing for what they are so i i truly believe that when when a woman stands you know uh, with her own grit power and determination she has the conviction of you know not having to believe in anybody else but herself i think that can change a lot of things around in the world so it all starts with leading first with yourself and then others and for me resilience is you know all that goes with yourself first you know risking all out your imperfections um, accepting it and then exponentially taking out uh, you know uh, taking it to the next level so for me uh, that's what resilience is all about thank you so much ria thank you so much for sharing um that really beautiful presentation about resilience and there's something you said that spoke to me you talked about resilience being um ris risking imperfection and i agree with you 100% you know i'm all for authenticity and just being ourselves and for us to actually be resilient we need to be aware many times of not just our strength but our weaknesses as well right we understand and we become become comfortable with that we also understand that life will not always go the way we plan that you know there're going to be challenges and we're going to experience failure and we're not going to be good at everything we're great at some things and we're not good at all of it and but even though we're not great at those things we're strong enough or we're able to you know so basically build that strength to be able to snap back into you know our purpose or spark back into the things that we envision for our lives even with knowing that you know we have certain imperfections so thank you so much ria for just um sharing that beautiful presentation here with us and annabella oh my god i'm so blessed i feel so blessed just being in the amazing company of some really truly amazing women here now i know we have another speaker who for some reason could not make it but she did she was kind enough um generous enough to Thank send her video um, to us to just share a little bit of her thoughts now Gwendolyn Myers uh, looking at women in business and especially in my new role as uh, the global chair for G100 youth empowerment under the youth empowerment wing of uh, G100 100 global women leaders in the world I'm truly honored and humbled to be joining women leaders uh, great women leaders uh, women of influence on this panel today uh, looking at resilience, especially uh, from youth perspective and uh, recognizing the role of young women. I serve as founder and executive director of a youth-led peace-building organization in Liberia called the Messengers of Peace. And this is an organization that is working 
with a thousand five hundred plus young people uh, promoting the active and meaningful involvement of young people in peace and security issues. Peace business is not entirely an exciting profit-making venture or an initiative. Hence, the limited number of persons, especially women, working in peace building and peacekeeping initiatives. At the formation of Messengers of Peace, uh, we were all filled with enthusiasm and hope for a bright future for Liberia. But as we started to grow, and as the years went by, our volunteer base dwindled to trickle. We are daily confronted with peace, with the pace and intensity of our work. The global pandemic has exacerbated uh, as well the issues which result into lack of funding support from government, private and international community, on ending conflict and divisive rhetoric, mainly from spectators, making our work as women difficult. However, women, especially young women, keep coming back and again to do what we have to do and not to lose focus. 13 years since the establishment of Messengers of Peace, the organization remains unfounded in terms of a daily operation by any major donor. We are yet to receive grants for our daily operations and upkeep of the organization and as well to sustain most of its programming. Most of our programs are self-funded through fundraising and goodwill of our board of directors. Resilience is one of the key reasons we are still operating after 13 years running a non-profit as youth-led peace-building organization. We have taken several opportunities and more than we have also created opportunities for young people. For instance, women should create opportunities for themselves and should also invite themselves to the table when others fail to do so. At Messengers of Peace, we continue to seize the opportunities presented to us by United Nations Security Council Resolutions 2250 2419 and as well 2535 on youth peace and security and also 1325 on women peace and security protocols and as well special days and events to drive our programs the world is becoming to recognize the crucial role of women in all disciplines and this is based on the persistence of women before us because of our persistence drive and passion to advocate and promote sustainable peace in Liberia, Messengers of Peace will receive the first ever National Peace Prize Award given in honor of the Excellency of President George Manenwea to Messengers of Peace celebrating 15 years of unbroken peace in Liberia. And for us, we see that particular recognition as a way to say peace has been rebranded with young people. We've also been recognized as part of the, the top eight young global reformers in the world by Times magazine. We've also received numerous uh, scholarships from UK government, Bowie Peace Foundation Africa, and as well participated and represented young people in different international fora. To conclude, I would say resilience of women in business should always be supported by its agility and a strong sense of purpose. Issues we should remain like the energy that is not lost, but always transforming. Young women will need to harness inner strength, potential, and competencies, not to yield to societal pressure. Mentorship has greatly helped in shaping my values and principles. Above all, religion and my faith has prepared me for mental and emotional resilience, creating positive emotions where negativity permeates. Education has laid the foundation for social and physical resilience. According to Socrates, the secret of change is to focus all energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Let's apply this and keep on promoting that secret of resilience. Thank you so very much for this invitation and we wish you all the best 
especially as we look forward uh, to promoting young people active and meaningful involvement as we shape the global agenda, especially in our new role as global chair for G100 under the youth empowerment win of the top 100 global women leaders in the world. All the best. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for sharing that video from um, our last speaker, Gwendolyn Myers, who could not be here, uh, but you know was kind enough to send, the, you know, share that with us. I know she did mention something about energy, you know, just resilience. How resilience is the energy that keeps transforming, and so as women who are resilient, that's something that we have to take into cognizance. And how mentorship is important in helping us to build resilience. For those of us who don't feel resilient enough we can find mentors, women who have who are great examples of what it is to have resilience and build resilience to mentor us, to shape us, to guide us, and show us the path in which that they have traveled so that we can build resilience for ourselves. Thank you so much, Annabella, for you know sharing with us. Thank you, Michelle. I know she's not here. Uh, thank you, um, Shreya, for just sharing with us in this uh, panel. And um, I'm so grateful to have moderated this. if they can unmute right now okay here we go can you hear me yes we can okay wonderful thank you so much alex for moderating this incredible panel the first one i was like oh my god i'm so excited the second one just has blown my mind i think it was absolutely wonderful empowerment resilience and now we're going to be moving into entrepreneurship we have mar right here mar what did you think i I was glued to my screen the whole time. It was incredible. Absolutely, Virginia. I was, as I say when I started, with all of you that are in professional communication, I would be on silent. I am absolutely speechless. And, I, and you have seen Alex as a moderator, but now you are going to see her as a speaker. So be prepared, Virginia. That would be very, very strong. So I'm looking forward for that. Lovely, the, the stories, the case study, the, this personal resilience that we were talking about, all the all the, the speakers, you know, especially, also I would like to highlight Wendell Mayers, because she's going through a very difficult personal situation. And even that, she record the video just for us. So she has shown personal resilience live here. So please appreciate that. And Abela, it was absolutely strong and with a lot of courage to tell that story. Michelle, with her story, with, with its context, cultural context from Mexico. And so we really, I really appreciate all, all they're doing and all the work. Alex, this was fantastic. Are you happy with the, with the work? Are you satisfied with the results? Ex extremely satisfied you know thank you for just putting this together to have you know just the diversity of women on the panel and just to have the diversity of conversation as well because let's be honest resilience is something important and i loved how we have very thoughts on just what resilience is so thank you so much for this yeah, and, and, and just, just to end and we pass to the next next panel sherta sherta from india also resilience personal resilience, resilience. She thinks of the difference of hours and she's there and she's also preparing for next Saturday. There will be a big event from Wiki India that Sherta is organizing as president. And so also another effort, another example of life of, of personal resilience. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to go, and this is our last panel. I'm so excited to moderate this panel. And this is entrepreneurship. In Puerto Rico, I co-founded an organization that helps women find their passion and more than anything, become financially autonomous. To me, entrepreneurship goes hand by hand with making decisions about your life. It's how we put action into a plan and hopefully make a profit on it, right? When we have these ideas. So entrepreneurship is the one thing that women are turning to especially after 2020. 2020 was a wake up call for the majority of us. We had a past and now there's a new reality. We learned a lot about corporations. We learned a lot about employment and employers. We learned about a lot about where we still stand as women in our society 
when push comes to shove. The majority of us had to go home, work remotely, and also take care of our kids at the same time when they were going to school because a lot of our classes and schooling was done virtually. So as women, we work in the corporate world, we're these great leaders, but we still have these other roles that are not paid, but that move our world. So a lot of women after 2020 said, I need to have more flexibility. There is a life for me that I need to continue having. And more importantly, a lot of women like Morel said, if there's not a space for me in that table, I'm making my own table. So I have to say that entrepreneurship is really the heartbeat of our global economy. And definitely women are an engine. So today we have four wonderful entrepreneurs, women that truly believe in empowering our women to become the best that they can be. So today with me, let's go ahead and introduce our fabulous four speakers. Well, Omar, uh, hi. So if you want to say anything else about entrepreneurship, welcome. Do you want to say something? Okay. So, so we're going to be starting now. And with us today, we have Dr. Anita Davis Defoe. Welcome, Anita. I'm going to, I said the doctor for a little while. Now it's going to be Anita, you know, woman to woman. We'll be talking about this. How are you today? Okay, I wanted to check. You're on mute. There we go. So Dr. Anita Defoe, Dallas Defoe, she is the CEO and founder of Upshift. She's also the global chair for youth entrepreneur. Youth Enterprise, and she's a leadership. So I am thinking based on this, um, I know that you have a lot of experience when it comes to really inspiring, coaching, motivating, not only individuals, but also organizations. But definitely when we talk about our leadership with our youth, how do we empower them to really believe that the skills, the talent, and those abilities can become a money-making proposition to really empower not only their community, but their country. So welcome, Anita. The floor is all yours. Well, thank you so much. Indeed, it's my honor and, and privilege to, to be here and, and listening to just the fabulous uh, presentations that uh, have gone before, before me. Uh, entrepreneurship and this discussion, whether for youth, adults, uh, women, it is, as you said, uh, such a key a key conversation because entrepreneurship small businesses they drive the, the the economy no matter where you are in the world and I guess what I was reflecting on uh, what I would share I thought about my own my own journey working uh, to decide if I was going to answer the call to what I call the call to purpose of entrepreneurship or do what was expected to me uh, of me. Briefly, I, I was socialized by uh, two parents that were educators, a school principal and a teacher. So many of us are not socialized to think about uh, entrepreneurship. We're, th we're taught more to think about jobs. And having a job is a, is a great thing, uh, but you also have to think about having a dual, a dual career pathway. I spend a lot of time uh, working with youth and adults about trying to find their career pathway, trying to understand their transferable skills. And what COVID-19 has taught us all is that there is definitely a need for multiple streams of income, and you need to understand your transferable skills in case there is some disruption in the in the industry. What I try to teach youth and adults adults as well is you got to really have a different mindset in this global marketplace that we're in that everybody even if you never open up a storefront you are an entrepreneur because you are selling two things uh, to a company you're selling your skills and your time and now some people may do that within the confines of a, a corporate or organizational structure some people may opt to do it through creating their own enterprises and that is what people have to stop and think i always encourage people to go on a dual track where you are identifying your talents your transferable skills and you identify ways to monetize that because on any 
given day, anywhere in the world, you can go into an office and be told that you're not needed anymore. And if you don't have some other means of supporting yourself, of self-sufficiency, that you end up really in, in a bad situation. I share often what I call uh, my, you know, my peas for entrepreneurship. And first I say to people, and this is, this is a path that I followed myself, is find something that you're passionate about. Find something that you so enjoy doing that you have developed and become an expert in or you demonstrate expertise and that you would do it even if nobody was paying you for it. That is part of your passion. That's part of your strength. That's part of something that you could create into a full-fledged uh, enterprise. Then when you find you know what that passion is, become very purposeful about how you're going to use it. How you're going to use it to uplift others. I use my my knowledge in business development. Uh, I've written millions of grants over many years. I use that to teach people how to write business proposals. Use that in a purposeful way. So you take your passion, you come up with a purpose. Of course, you do planning. How am I going to use this? How am I going to create a viable uh, uh, enterprise? And then I can't speak enough about being persistent because whenever you're building anything, whether a career or a business, you really have to be persistent because as the last panel said, it does take resiliency and it takes us to keep on trying and keep giving up, get, getting up. It doesn't matter really how many times you're knocked down, it's if you choose to give up. And we have to remember that in, in business, in life, what we choose to define as failure is because we have decided to diagnose and to define it as that when we have a setback or something doesn't work in the time frame that we believe i say it's not failure as humans as we tend to call it it's really telling you you need to change your process look at the process don't claim it and and start to say oh i failed let me give up don't take that mindset. And then the last key thing is partnerships. Much of what I have been able to do in terms of business has been through relationships and, and partnerships. So building collaborative partnerships, being a good collaborative partner, making it value added, those are the core things. Because in the end, no matter where you look in the world, 80% of the economy in any country is being driven by small entrepreneurs and people if they are taught the tools and if they are given a pathway they can create a viable business so many times when we think of business we immediately say oh i don't have a storefront i don't have this i don't have that Many of the businesses, major corporations that we look at now, if you really look at the backdrop, you look at the story, they started as home-based businesses. And in this day and age, with the use of technology, the world is your customer. This is the best time to create a business because so many things are in the digital space. So you can have customers anywhere in the world. And so... People need to, if they have not thought about themselves as an entrepreneur, even if you Google it now as I'm speaking, entrepreneur mindset, even if you don't open up a business, you will find that employers are saying they want to hire people with an entrepreneurial mindset because they are looking for people who are looking at opportunities, looking at gaps in the market and figuring out what kind of product or service can we create to fulfill that? And that's what entrepreneurs do. So whether you open up a business or you work at a business, you need that mindset. You need to be able to think critically. So for young people, especially in this world that we're in, that is so globalized and so technologically focused, thinking about business, thinking about enterprise, and particularly thinking about it from a social enterprise aspect where your business is doing something good that transforms the community, transforms your life. That's one of the most powerful things that you can do. So I just wanna to share to everyone that has joined us, there is power in entrepreneur. 
an entrepreneurship. There is an entrepreneur inside of you and that you have the tools, you have the wherewithal, particularly if you choose to be, be persistent, that you can transform your community, you can transform the lives of so many others. Entrepreneurship is the key, especially for women that want to have flexibility and they want to be able to be home with their children or they just want to have more control over their life. There is power in enterprise, especially in a social enterprise. And so I challenge everyone, teach your next generation in your community about the power of entrepreneurship. Know and understand the tools and take your passion, your purpose, your persistence and your partnership and you can create an entrepreneurship experience that will be unforgettable for you and people in your community. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. We all sell something. We're all out there. If it's ourselves, it's what we do. But definitely, we have that mindset. Nobody can scare us into anything. You know, I've always thought, and I learned early on because I came from a humble beginning, and I always saw my mom work. And people would always say, you always dress so nice. You always, And I would always think, wow, my mom has always taught me that whatever talents I had, I could use them to create an opportunity for myself. So if there's something that I learned in my life was really having that mindset sharp, always thinking, what can, how, what can I do to move this ahead? How can I move ahead? And like you say, that entrepreneurship to work and be an entrepreneur within an organization is very valuable. So thank you so much, D Dr. Anita. I want to know if there's anybody else from our um, group, our panel, other than Alex, before I introduce Alex. So I think they may have had a little issues with the time. So Alex, it's wonderful me for me to have you here. Dr. Anita Davis, don't leave. Stay around. That way we can chat a little bit more about entrepreneurship. But today I have to say, Alex, you are so energetic, love your passion, love how you communicate, and I know why. She is a well-known <laughs> media personality. She's an actress, she's an entrepreneur, she's also a creative consultant. So I am so happy to have you here on my team today on this beautiful panel. <laughs> Additional to that, you know, I always tell Mart I love my my panels that she's like, and I usually say, it's the best panel. I'm not saying it's the best. They're all wonderful. Nonetheless, entrepreneurship is in my veins. You know, it's something that I was raised doing. So I love to talk to women that even if we're afraid, we do it with fear because we're not, we just step forward and we walk into it. And the truth is that it is an engine. It is what moves our economies around the world. So if we could tell our kids to have that seed and start developing early on, the future is theirs indeed. Additional to that, Alex, has, she is the CEO of Bragg Media Group. So also tell me a little bit about what Bragg does because I'm really curious about what that means. Where did you get that incredible name? Well, you know what, first of all, thank you, Virginia, for, you know, just the introduction. And I'm so excited to be here. And, you know, while you were talking about um, just entrepreneurship, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I'm an accidental entrepreneur, like accidental, <laughs> <laughs> right? right? That just happened, by the way. But yes, how did Bragg Media come across? Well, Bragg actually stands for Boldly Radically Achieving Goals. And Bragg really came from celebrating. I took what looked like a negative connotation when you say to brag you're thinking okay this is somebody who's boasted but i felt like we women and just in general people we work so hard right and we work so hard but we don't remember to celebrate our accomplishments we don't remember to celebrate ourselves celebrate the hard work the persistence the ten tenacity just everything that it's taking us to achieve a goal so the concept of brag is literally to just celebrate hard work, um, to celebrate accomplishment. And so we started a media group, um, which um, is a creative communications company. And we have several sub brands that deal with different forms of media. Uh, we've got the Bragg Media Company, which is uh, 
uh, a service arm of, of the Bragg Media Group. And what we do is it's a brand consulting. Um, we offer innovative media solutions and of course, creative services from publishing books for um, you know authors to creating media content, to supporting them to create their brand, their platform, their messages and all of that. So pretty much that's what the Bragg Media does. Um, I love it, love it. Let me see if they can bring us back. Hold on, let me see. Um, mm -hmm. Karen, uh, uh, hello, Karen. Okay, so here we are. So thank you. Um, so oh, here we are. There. We, so anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead with you, but I'm gonna want you to end this panel today. So I just wanted to ask you, Alex, because I was very curious about what Bragg meant, and you know what? I love it because it is true. We don't really acknowledge what we do. Sometimes we say what everybody else does, and then we forget about our own accomplishments. So definitely love it, love it, love it. Okay, so welcome, Sarifa. Thank you so much for being here, Sarifa Alonto. And I, the last name, Jones, Jones? Jones. Jones, Jones, welcome. She is today, she is with us and she is a best-selling author. And I love it because the book is called Love Your Obstacles. So I love the fact that, you know, because many times we think that we're hurt because of our obstacles and we heard in the previous resiliency panel that obstacles really create a ladder for us to continue growing so definitely love your book love our pat love, um, love our obstacles and also you are the australia chair for business networking so welcome what does entrepreneurship because you are an entrepreneur a best-selling author and what does that mean to you especially down under in australia um, yes, uh, good morning, uh, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, for me, entrepreneurship uh, is part of my lifelong journey from the day we decided to establish our own educational facilities to serve the community and to support those working mothers who struggle to find quality childcare and kindergarten facilities. So that's what it means for me. and. Uh, Establishing a business is one thing, and anybody can do it. But nurturing and growing a business is another issue, and that's where the challenge lies. Challenges lie. So for me, it is very important that you pursue a business that is in in, in alignment with your passion. And uh, so that's that's just for uh, for me how uh, entrepreneurship is. But sometimes uh, it just makes you wonder why some businesses fail and close within three years of uh, operation. According to various researches, more than 60% of bis businesses in the UK and in Australia fail uh, within three years of operation. And also um, over 80% of uh, first-time European entrepreneurs have failed businesses venture due to cash flow problems and other problems. So these closures are due to various reasons like financial hardship, mismanagement, or didn't have uh, the right employees and etc. But based on my experience, there are three elements that play essential roles in uh, for the success of the uh, of my entrepreneurship. And first one is uh, I always believe and I always said that it's always the vision and mission uh, of uh, any organization or business is a very important role. And second one is the entrepreneurs or the management and, the, and their own leadership. And the third one I believe is the employees. Uh, the employees are uh, is a very important element uh, that blow, uh, that plays the uh, role for the successful uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, when I say vision and mission uh, of the business is the very Bible of its operation. And the vision and mission always serves as the fundamental guidelines of the business operation. And every for me, every employee should be in, in the bone, pra practicing it, breathing it, reflecting in the practices embedded within them because the vision and mission uh, is a promise to the clients and therefore needs to be fulfilled and reflected within the operation of the business. 
And the second one is the management and leadership of a business. So an entrepreneur, entrepreneur must be passionate within the industry so the business can thrive when adversity strikes. And uh, also when you are passionate with the industry, you raise it like you raise a child, that there is longevity. Managing, for me, managing the business is also an art. We are in charge of our employees and we need to deal with their behavior. And this can be very challenging, but when we need to, but, but very challenging and we need to deal with them accordingly because they are the asset of the business. So as an entrepreneur, we need to be flexible as we can't afford to be broken when accident strikes like this COVID-19. We really need to be ready to face the obstacles along our journey. And I always have this saying that, that we always need to remember the bigger the business, the greater the obstacles are and the tougher we should be. Because if you break as an entrepreneur, the business will break with you. But how do you stay strong to withstand any obstacles to protect your business from closure? Based on my experience, you really need to look after your employees because as they say, they are the key asset or important elements of the business. And they are the one who either break or make the business succeed. So they are the one who provide quality services with the clients and they are the ones who make the client happy or disappointed. So when I started our first business, it was a learning curve for me and I had no business experience and I was a fresh graduate from university and new to the country. And I would say that I was brave enough and ambitious to establish a childcare and kindergarten business from scratch, from purchasing the land and erecting the facility to operational within six months. My children at the time were still very young. The youngest one was four, four months old and the eldest only four years old. When we started the operation of our first business, and my husband was also working full time at the time. So I had to learn how to juggle between family, business, and social responsibility and ensure I was managing my time accordingly. But this experience made me grow uh, more businesses, uh, educational institutions uh, locally and abroad. So, if you see it being an entrepreneur, you must be willing to accept the challenges that are placed in front of you. And it can be positive experiences as well as negative ones as you grow your business. But through hard work and determination, you will always see success in your business. And that's, that's my experience throughout uh, our businesses. Yeah. And thank you so much. <laughs> For sure. You know, many times we don't even talk about that, but it has to be established because it's what aligns you with the values. And when you have your employees, when you start recruiting, they need to also be in alignment with your vision and your mission. And leadership has to live that. But it's the only way that we can guarantee that our employees feel appreciated, that they're part of the same project. So thank you so much for sharing that because that is so key when it comes to entrepreneurship and when we're opening a business to bring more people in. Because sometimes it's just me, you know, it's a solopreneur and it's wonderful. But when we really start opening it up to bring employees in and we want them to really take ownership of our business and treat it like we love it, then we also have to have that vision and mission so in place.
okay. Sarifa, do you hear do you hear do you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you. Hello? Okay. okay. Hear me? Can you hear she's me? Back. She's, okay. she's back. She's back on. Yes. So much, Alex. I was like, Alex is there, so I know everything is be okay. So thank you so much. Um, I wanted to know if Dr. Sanja Popovic was there. Um, if not, then we'll go ahead with with Alex. So Alex, now we're going to have some time to talk with you, and then we can all chat. I, I would like you to stay so we can have a, a conversation after this. Um, but Alex, um, you're from Nigeria. Yes, I am. And it's wonderful because what we're hearing when we when we when we all find out and we all want to look into women and entrepreneurship, Nigeria is stepping up there and really guiding a lot of us women that are going into our own business. How does it feel for you to see this incredible growth when it comes to entrepreneurship? I still know that we're underrepresented and definitely underestimated. It's all over. But but the truth is that we are breaking some ground, and you know, if we want to look at the positive things in this world and what we're how we're moving towards this globalization, how does it feel to be a woman empowered in this moment in Nigeria? Well, let me say that it does it does feel good to understand that you know women realizing that they have the power to create their future. Right. And when we talk about when we talk about uh, empowerment and we talk about parity, we talk about a lot of these things. You think about economic empowerment is, is central for women to be able to do more in the community, to have that sort of um, to know that they have the they have the power to be able to establish and 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 just basically contribute to the community. So in Nigeria, it's amazing. There are lots of, you know, women entrepreneurs, um, women understanding, even women in career, you know, professionals who understand that they can have a side hustle, right? Or they can, you know, explore, have a second option or that they can invest in opportunities and then they can try entrepreneurship. They're just all forms of ways that women are basically standing up and creating opportunities for themselves. And there's something that Mirel said that really stood out, I think in the other panel was where she said she created a seat for herself um, or created a table for herself. And that's what entrepreneurship really is, is understanding that you have the power to create that table and for you to be able to add to the economy, to contribute to the economy. So I will start by saying that uh, first of all, thank you to everything that um, Dr. Um, Anita shared and, 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 and Sarif shared as well. I was listening to them and just trying to not repeat <laughs> what they were going to say. Um, but thinking about entrepreneurship and understanding how uh, great entrepreneurship is um, where um, your brand, where your brand, your business, and your behavior align. Um, I think about it in that way. It's like where your brand, your business, and your behavior rely. And it's very easy to say, oh, there's a similarity between what's the difference between being an entrepreneur and being a business, you know, just being a business owner. And while for somebody who's a business owner might be more, a whole lot more concerned with, you know, ROI and, and, and profit margins and all of that. And of course, we want those things. Um, entrepreneurs are really concerned with creating value. I think that what they think about is how do I create value and how do I provide solutions to problems? What are the things that I can provide as solutions? Yes, in the pro in the process, make some good money and make some profit, but how do I, their focus, primary focus is to make a difference in the community or in the society or in the world, however it is. And of course, as um, uh, Dr. Anita was talking about, you know, globalization and how we've become a global village. I think it's essential that women understand that, um, they don't just have to be local entrepreneurs. They can now be global entrepreneurs because honestly speaking, your clients are everywhere. I live in Nigeria and you know, a lot of my clients are scattered all over the world. Like we're here in Nigeria serving clients in the UK, in the US, in Australia, in Canada, everywhere, right? Because from the very beginning, my outlook on entrepreneurship was how do I serve the world? So there's one part, there's just one thing that I, you know, I talked about, um, our brand, our business, and our behavior aligning. I think Dr. Sarifa really talked about our behavior and business. She said she said quite a number of things about the mission, the vision, and how our employees have to take that. I know um, um, Dr. Anita did explore a little bit about the business. So I wanna talk about the brand because I think that's something that women, when we delve into entrepreneurship, 
we have this great idea of the value that we want to create. We have the solution that we want to provide and we kick off with starting a business. But I think that we forget to think about the brand in itself. And what is that brand? That brand is the sort of the value proposition of what you're offering. But most importantly, let me simplify this. It is your reputation, the identity of that business. Um, it is what people are saying about you or about the, the value that you offer when you're not in the room. So what are those things that we consider um, if we're going to create, if we're going to become entrepreneurs and if we're going to put out solution and values and provide something out there in the world, how do we, how do we um, focus on building the right identity that helps us to not only earn profit margins, but also earn another form of currency that I like to talk about. And since we are in a global networking, um, ne a global networking uh, conversation, or should I call it, you know, conference or webinar, uh, one of the key things that I thought, and I think that Dr. Anita talked about partnerships is how it's so important for us to not just have money um, or just end profit, but we should also build another form of currency, which I'd like to call goodwill currency. Because goodwill currency enables us as entrepreneurs to be able to, ex to just expand what we're doing, to be able to attract collaborations and partnerships and find the right people to work and partner with. So I think that goodwill currency is something that we don't really think as currency. Yeah, we think, okay, well, I want to have partners and I want to collaborate and I want to find someone to, but we don't think that that is also something that you earn, that your business has to earn for your business to be able to survive, for your business to be able to scale, for your business or your brand to be able to go beyond its local environment. And that's how, you know, for my own business, we've been able to build relationships and to be able to operate beyond borders because we were thinking not just of profit matches, but also of goodwill currency. So there's there are quite a number of things that your goodwill currency would afford you that your money in the bank cannot afford you, depending on the kind of relationships that you're building. So I want to go into the brand to just say there are three major things that we consider when we're building a brand uh, as entrepreneurs. You want to think about one, perception. The first P, I'd like to say perception. Um, the second P we're going to talk about is positioning. And then the third P is promise, which is the most important thing. It's, you know, perception, what perception do people have about the business that you're creating, the value you're offering, the solution you're putting out there in the world? What is the perception they have about that? Uh, positioning, how do you position yourself in the marketplace that you're the one, right? So let's say you're a woman who's running a business, but there are several other women running the exact same business in the exact same marketplace. How do you position your brand in a way that you're top of mind how do you position what you offer even if you're a, you know even if you're in the career space and you work for a company how do you position yourself as a personal brand within that enterprise or within that organization that people know that you're the one to call you're the one top of mind because you're the expert or you're the one who provides the best solution or the best value and then we'll talk about the last one promise which is the most essential part promise is um the promise you make to the clients or the promise you make to your customers, the promise you, you, you know, you make to whoever it is you're offering that product or service or value or solution. And so what are the three things that will help to enable all of this come together for you as a brand? I would say, for example, for um, perception, one of the key things I would like to say, though, it's, you know, there are three C's I'd like to say it help enable the three P's. The first for perception would be one, I would like to say content. And when I say content, I'm talking about the quality of the content. When we say, what, what's the content? What's inside? What's what's the offering? The content, the quality of what you're offering. Could that be the quality of the information you're serving? Let's say you're information-based, um, or is that a service or product? What is the quality of the service or products that you're offering? Because that's what essentially creates the perception. So I think a lot of the times people spend so much time within their business. Um, yes, it's great to focus on human resource. It's great to focus on the tools you need. It's great to focus on you know the you know your business your your business space and all of the other tools but what about focusing on the quality of what you're offering i don't know if enough people spend time you know how do i offer more value how can i offer more value how can i refine the quality of the products i'm putting out there how can i refine the quality of the service i'm putting out there how can i refine the quality of the information i'm putting out there in the space so 
That's what creates perception. That's what creates if you're putting value out there in the marketplace. Now, I, I'm trying to jump this. I know we don't have enough time. So let's talk about uh, positioning. Now, what creates positioning? A lot of people will think that positioning is really about packaging or posturing. If I you know, pretend to be this person or pretend to be that, essentially your business will only survive if you create positioning by offering creativity. And I will offer this as, you know, uh, when we talk about creativity, most times people just think that creativity is art. And while creativity is art, creativity is also science. It's understanding why people make certain choices. Why do people make buying choices? Why do they come to you? How do people respond to work of, to your service, to your product? But essentially, creativity is providing innovative solution. So as someone who's willing to position themselves within their entrepreneurial within the entrepreneurial space or within your business, you're saying to yourself, how do I position myself as the expert? And that is in you providing innovative solution. So there are so many Alex, you know, so many people like Alex in that space. How is Alex different or how will Alex position herself and make sure that she's top of mind when somebody is thinking about a creative consultant or thinking about a brand consultant or think about somebody to, you know, a company to employ or whatever service you're offering. Why do you go for the brands that you buy? Because they position themselves. They find creative ways, innovative ways to stay on top of mind, innovative ways to position themselves as the right um, solution provider. And then we have to go to the last one, which is very, very, you know, is something that really, really means a lot to me. And that's promise. Essentially, what forms the promise is your communication. How do you communicate what you do? How do you communicate the kind of brand that you are? How do you communicate your, your, um, solution. Um, and when we're talking about communication, we're not just talking about verbal communication. We're talking about visual communication. We're talking about all forms of communication aligned in your visual, your, your verbal and your nonverbal communication that you can't say that you are a luxury brand and communicate like you're a mass production. You cannot say that you are um, you know, a doctor and communicate like you're an artist like me, <laughs> right? You cannot say what I'm just saying, essentially, whatever promises you're making out there, your communication has to match it visually, non-verbally and verbally. So essentially, this is what I'm going to say. Um, I know I don't want to drag this too long because uh, we're already getting out of time. Um, but for me, entrepreneurship is um, making sure that your brand, your business and your behavior all align. Thank you. Loved everything, loved everything that we have talked about in this panel. Uh, I think we hit the nail on the head, starting with Dr. Anita, when we're talking about how we really get our youth thinking, or all of us thinking that we're all entrepreneurs and that can we can be entrepreneurial in our employment and that we need that entrepreneur mindset. I mean, if we need to start everything with that, right? That is like key. And then Sarifa brings in that mission and vision and amongst other valuable stuff. But how many times do we forget that there's a mission in our in, in that environment? Even if it's just you, you have to be so clear of why I'm here. And people need to understand why you're there and why you continue to stay there. And wow, um, Alex, global, I mean, goodwill currency. You know what? I think we talk about emotional salary and a lot of people understood that when we talked about it a while back, but now we talk about this goodwill currency. We all want to make collaborations like Dr. Anita said, but you know, in order to collaborate with you, I have to see something there. Not only what do I get, I mean, definitely a win-win is important, but more, what am I getting that is substantial? Why would I want to partner with somebody? So we have to have this completely always top of mind and the three P's definitely um, perception is reality for the majority of people. So we have to be so careful and what the intangibles and the tangible perceptions that people have of our brand. And that usually ends up in brand, right? Brand is who we are, what people think of us, who they think we are. So I have to say that this has been such an amazing panel and I, I think all of you may want to add something else I think we have like two or three minutes so before we say goodbye I want to start with Dr. Anita Dr. Anita before you leave uh, I would like you to tell us something that will really will inspire somebody to see themselves as an entrepreneur that we all are well I guess I, I would share that all of us have a call for entrepreneurship but often we're not socialized to embrace it but I think in the marketplace that we're in, it just will do everybody 
just wise to embrace that entrepreneurship, that dream. I, I say destiny is calling people. And it, it is. And even if you maintain the job, respond. I know when I was when, when I was called to entrepreneurship, I had a, a very wonderful job, a vice president, great money. And people told me I was crazy that I was talking about that destiny was calling me and I had a higher calling. So people have to realize that just as unique as your DNA is, so is your journey and and uh, your destiny and what you're called to do. And Thanks. you have to start with leading first and foremost yourself. And your journey may be quite different. And so if entrepreneurship is in, in your spirit, whether it's in, in, in within an organization or if it's creating, answer it don't be don't apologize to anyone about it really circle and and, and cover yourself with people who understand because people don't often understand your dream and you can let your dream be derailed by listening to someone else so the leadership and we, and we didn't even have a chance to talk about that first and foremost it starts with leading yourself so i just tell everybody Success is inside everybody. So is that entrepreneur dream and it will chase you down. And I often say, if you're sitting on your dream, you're not manifesting it and it will not let you go. Right. You keep coming back over and over and over. Absolutely. So never too late. Powerful. Thank you so much. It's never too late. Absolutely. And you can't sit on your dream. You have to like you have to let it out. You have to share it with other people. Sarifa, I was reading about you and you truly believe in education through entrepreneurship. And I said, I read something about future with choices, right? And I love that, that you said there is a future out there that we do have choices. Can you like finish this up with that, please? Um, yes, uh, I think for me, education is a very, very powerful tool if you want to change the world. As Mandela also said, that uh, that's how powerful education. And uh, we always have a choice. But when you have the proper and quality education, you assure that you have a better future. And it is for me, the education is the experiential. How you educate people. People can be educated in many different Absolutely. ways. It could be a formally educated or non formal education where uh, it's not too late for anybody, uh, where you could learn different skills uh, uh, to enhance your talents and your capability also. And for those young one is uh, going through formal education, when uh, you go through a formal education and you do very well, uh, as my experience when I was young it was that education was the only ticket I had and I was not good in anything, but I had to figure out how to study very well, study hard and consistently do it. And that's what makes me stand out uh, from others. Uh, and that's how I succeed being an orphan, orphan from a very young age. Uh, I had nothing but a hope and a dream. And for me to achieve my dream to where I am now is through education. That's why I did education. So, education is power and when you have that power within you you can give that beautiful experience as an entrepreneur and it is the experience that make people not forget you it is the experience that you have provided that you will always be remembered anything you do it's forgotten but when it comes to experience how they treat you is that's what stays in the heart of that's the right. people yeah beautiful thank you so much absolutely and i love that there are there's so many choices through education nowadays thanks to technology we can all have access to certifications webinars different courses <laughs> oh but you know it, it's just a beautiful thing hi mar so here we are i know that sanja wasn't able to make it okay I, we have to unmute mar Yes, there you go. Yeah, we are so sorry about that. We were very much looking forward to Sanja. She will send us a video. And you know, this is a virtual world. We have to accept it. The things that we cannot change it, we accept That's right. it. 
And this is just the first one of many other events. So we just see it with the, the future. Wonderful. So, um, well, Sanja, don't worry. We'll be listening and we'll be waiting for your video. And I'm gonna start. I'm gonna finish now with Alex. Alex, we talked a lot, a little bit about, and I wanted us to finish with this. You talked about global entrepreneurs that we can all be global entrepreneurs. How important it is to have that vision that is just not what's in front of you that you can actually reach out, especially through technology. Okay, just unmuted myself. Um, yeah. It is very important. It is, um, you know, I'm glad that you asked that question, Virginia. I, I think it's really important for us to have a global outlook and a global mindset, because like we said, we're in a global village. Let me give you an example. During the pandemic, um, when it happened, um, you know, I was sad to see what happened and it did affect all of us in different ways. If it did not affect some people's businesses, it did affect us, you know, in the home front with our children, right. you know, my kid had to stay at home, home schooling there was just some way that it affected um but for, for me from the business aspect it did not affect me much because i already had digital digitally proved my business in a way that i could operate from anywhere i was and anywhere i am with clients anywhere so what am i saying essentially while for a lot of people who ran local businesses who couldn't open up their stores or their shops or go to work it was a hard time and for someone like me who ran you know digital you know who was operating because now it's like i have no land i have an office in, in in new york and i have a you know place in nigeria and i'm working with clients all over the world it's essential that we start to have that global outlook understanding that our clients are everywhere they are online they're near us they are all over the place that we can provide solution and services and value and whatever it is to everyone around the world so i think as women in business in the 21st century in this day in this time we should have that global outlook thank you alex it's really fantastic what you're saying virginia is there i hope i hope we are we have lost it Thank you to all the speakers. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> it seems that we are, we, are, we are coming to an end. Virginia, we are coming to an end. It's so sad. Will you hear me? Yeah. I, I can, okay, I can hear you now, what? We are coming to an end, unfortunately. Yes, we are, we are. We are. Us the video after, after this event. And we, and this is a wrap. Yes, definitely. I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, truly, Alex, th welcome to the family. This has been absolutely wonderful to have this moment to chat with you. We were not able to share with you earlier um, when we first started, but it was really great having you here with us. Um, and Karen, excellent job. Excellent job <laughs> trying to manage everybody and all our reception and our signals and everything. Um, so bravo, bravo. A pleasure. A pleasure. <laughs> It takes a village to create these wonderful things. And I have to say, this was a superb event. So, Mar, thank you for the opportunity and really having us all here sharing this incredible moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mar. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, you Alex, you, for, your, for your generosity, for your attitude. I hope it's just the beginning. Now you are, yes, you are part is. of the family, so we are going to embrace you with us. That's right, be ready. <laughs> uh, right. Karen, Karen, would you like to say goodbye? Uh, thank you so much. And maybe I think that say a woman's leadership is a stranger when she helps more women shine. Thank That's you right. so much for this time. Thank you so much. For your experience and it's were very wonderful yeah. thank you thank you Karen, for all your work you know <laughs> we started saying that women in businesses is an issue is not it's about personal attitude it's about the private sector where are the boundaries where is the framework is political will is legislation what is it certainly the answers have been a big one a big axis of with social connections what we are doing, united women, talking, discussing, debate, even participating, don't isolate yourself. And that is the commitment that we take in our team from all legislative global networking to create a big, big networking of women in which we contribute by building resilience, by personal empowerment that boosts entrepreneurship 
an entrepreneurship mindset that is so important. Entrepreneurship could be many shapes. You just take that is for your, your culture, your attitude, and your profession. So thank you to all the amazing speakers for giving us the opportunity to great. make this big event so generously, solidarity, voluntary, and with passion. That's we start also, this passion that drive us to make this event that is the first one on women in businesses in English. We have done it in Spanish and we hope we will do more after for the fall, so after the summer. So thank you all and please, you, Virginia, anything miss it? No, I think that it was wonderful. It was just such a great moment to listen to all these women and their expertise and their experiences. I want to thank all those moments that we heard about stories, um, stories that really touched our hearts and that really show how we are resilient and we can go through. But I think one of the things that I always say when I end anything that we do is be brave because it's in there, you know, just be brave because you never know who you're inspiring. There's somebody out there that's listening to this today and saying, wow, if Alex did it, I can do this. If Maude is doing this, I can do this. If Karen is doing it. So we're here to really inspire ourselves and inspire others because we're a big, big, big group of women just trying to impact other women. So thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 See you next time. Your homework. Don't forget. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> you were great. Bless you were great. Thank you. 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 Th